Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94. Back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to the early 2000s NFL that wouldn't fly today. I wonder what they mean by that. Are they talking about the tackling? Because if we talk about the tackling, hell yeah, motherfuckers like Ray Rice, Ed Reed will fuck you up. Hell yeah, bro. The trash talking, the fighting, the physicality, the violence. That was all the early 2000s. That was the early 2000s greatness, bro. But anyway, so without further ado, let's get right into this. I, I wonder what this video is about. The landscape of the NFL was so much different in the 2000s, as was the world itself. While the Patriot Act put an end to our privacy, the Patriots of the NFL were quickly becoming a dynasty. Reality shows were a new staple on TV, and in turn, Hard Knocks became a crucial part of every August. As music and movies were now on demand, so too was our access to football. But while we can see the fingerprints of our current age of the NFL buried in the 2000s, they're still so so much that wouldn't fly today. Jacked Up. Jacked Up was a segment that aired on ESPN's NFL programming, primarily on the show Boom! NFL Primetime. That was a man's sport. And analysis. That's the back when it was a man's sport. Bone jarring hits from NFL Had to be a man. Accompanied by enthusiastic commentary from the hosts. Hosts that were a little too excited to break down players' CTE origin story. Man, shut the, the fuck up. Popularity for its energetic presentation and emphasis on the physicality of the sport. Plus the catchphrases. Had to be a money. man. It was hard not to like his fans back when we cheered for huge arterial damage causing hits more than we cringed. However, the segment received criticism for glorifying and sensationalizing violent hits that resulted in debilitating injuries to players. Many of the titles highlighted and jacked up were helmet to helmet hits or hits that led to concussions or other things like eating through a straw. It's fair to assume that by focusing on these. Bro, it's part of the game. It comes with the territory, it's part of the game. That's why you wear a helmet. <laughs> Come on, man. I fucking hate these pussy ass times we in right now. T today's times are so fucking pussy, bro. For real, bro. I hate this shit, bro. So fucking pussy, man. Who cares, bro? Niggas was getting fucked up back in these days, and that was good. That was good football. That was good entertainment. That's what you were supposed to do. What the fuck is the defender supposed to do? Let you walk all the way down to the touchdown? No, nigga. His job is to put you on your ass. By any means, nigga. These extreme plays, the segment promoted a culture that contributed to the long-term health risks faced by NFL players. And? We've obviously gotten safer since the 2000s. As awareness of concussions in football grew thanks solely to Will Smith, there was an increasing emphasis on player safety and reducing unnecessary risks on the field. The jacked up segment came under scrutiny for seemingly disregarding these concerns. And in response to the evolving understanding of player safety and potential impact of the segment, ESPN eventually phased out, jacked up, and pussy. shifted its coverage to focus pussy. more on the overall pussy. and player performance. ESPN is pussy. That's why nobody watching no more. That's why this week in sports ball is so much better. So now that's why nobody watches ESPN that you see are put on Highlight Heaven's channel and attempted to be erased from history altogether by the NFL. And remember, people, it's always better to be jacked up than jacked on. Horse collars hey, and yo. crackback blocks. Horse collar tackles and crackback oh, yeah. blocks were once prevalent in the NFL. But oh, yeah, yeah, I hate all the, the that shit right there. That shit right there. That should have get a cleat to your face. I swear to God. I'm going to take your helmet off and I'm going to stomp you with these cleats, nigga. And I got the Nike cleats with the metal. Better cover your face. <laughs> that shit right there with. Oh, bro. I can't tell you, bro. That shit right there, bro. Oh. Cleats all to the face. Nike cleats with the metal at the bottom all to your fucking face, bitch. Bitch, you better, bitch, you better block. Because I'm about to stomp you the fuck out with the motherfucking Nike cleats, bro. I swear to God, this shit used to piss me. Ooh, bro. Can't tell y'all how many times that shit pissed me off. 
were eventually outlawed due to concerns about player safety and potential for serious injuries. Where have we heard that before? A horse collar tackle occurs when a defender tackles an offensive player by grabbing the inside collar of a player's jersey and yanking them down from behind. This can lead to the tackled player's legs getting caught under them, resulting in dangerous falls and potential knee, ankle, or spinal injuries. Extra dirty defenders like Rodney Harrison would throw in landing on the back of a calf and a jacked up tibia to boot. These types of tackles gained attention due to several high profile injuries, including the case of Eagles receiver Terrell Owens in 2004, who suffered a serious ankle injury from a horse collar tackle. In 2005, the NFL implemented a rule that made horse collar tackles illegal. The rule stated that defenders were not allowed to grab the inside collar of the jersey at the back or side and pull the ball carrier to the ground. Cowboy safety Roy Williams, the patron saint of the horse collar tackle, was the poster boy for the move and eventually received a one game suspension for pulling down Donovan McNabb from behind in 2007. Interesting that his career took a downturn after that play. Likewise, a crackback block is a block made by an offensive player who comes back towards the line of scrimmage to block a defender who is moving laterally or towards the offensive backfield. These blocks often target players who are not expecting a hit from that direction, leaving them vulnerable to injury, particularly head and neck injuries. They can also lead to blindside hits that have a high potential for concussions. Now see that that shit right there, the offensive what are they supposed to do? They gotta block they man. We trying to go to the residence. What the fuck is we supposed bro this game got so fucking like listen bro the horse collar thing totally understood but I hated the horse collar tackles. But this shit right here, this was part of the game. That's what made, bro, everything that used to be good about the NFL is why a lot of niggas don't watch the NFL no more. I don't even watch the NFL like that no more, bro. I used to love waking up on Sundays, watching my uh, uh, Sunday morning cartoons, and then flipping it over to Fox for some football. You know what I'm saying? I loved it, bro. But the game got so pussy now, bro. It's not even worth it, bro. Being on the previously mentioned Jacked Up series. Jacked up! That was fully on display when Heinz Ward blindsided Bengals linebacker Keith Rivers in 2008, immediately ending his standout rookie season in Cincinnati. Interesting that Ward's hit doesn't get as much heat as Vontez Perfect hitting Antonio Brown, but then again, Keith Rivers never lost his mind and bankrupted an Arena Football League team. The NFL has also introduced rules to limit and regulate crackback blocks. For instance, crackback blocks that occur outside the tight end box, an area extending a few yards outside each tackle, are prohibited if the blocker is moving towards the original position of the ball at the snap. This rule change was intended to protect defensive players from blindside hits that could lead to injuries. Since the 2000s, the NFL has continued to evolve its rules and enforcement mechanisms to promote safer play and reduce the chances of players suffering preventable injuries, only pretty much because it looks bad on them not to. Yahoo Fantasy. Yahoo Sports fantasy football platform was once a highly popular and widely used platform for fantasy football enthusiasts. Yep. It gained popularity for several reasons, including its user-friendly... It was the only reason niggas had a Yahoo account, to be honest with you. That was the reason why niggas had a Yahoo email account, bro. Real talk. And then they got rid of that shit. Then niggas ended up saying, fuck Yahoo. Interface, custom... Yeah. <laughs> that cater to both casual and hardcore fantasy football players. However, since the aughts, its popularity has gone downhill, much like other 2000 stars like Britney Spears or Dick Cheney. Yahoo Sports offered a user-friendly interface that made it easy for both beginners and experienced players to create and manage their fantasy football teams. Yep. The platform provided tools for drafting players, setting lineups, making trades, and tracking player statistics. All groundbreaking shit back then. And get this, to get live stats updates, you actually had to pay extra for Stat Tracker. All this flexibility made it possible for players to tailor their fantasy experience to their preferences in ways we hadn't seen in the 90s when shit was done on paper. You really felt like a commissioner when you logged in, except you didn't pull in 50 million a year and have the power to suspend players unilaterally. 
but it was pretty satisfying to deny two of your asshole friends a trade. Over the years, numerous other fantasy football platforms and apps have emerged, including ESPN, CBS Sports, Underdog Fantasy, of course, and even NFL.com. And as time went on, newer platforms were successfully able to integrate the money part into fantasy sports and essentially skirt gambling laws as fantasy was deemed to involve skill. Parlay. Though taking Peyton Manning number one overall back in the 2000s all but guaranteed you a league win and getting that pick was pure freaking luck. Yep. But back then, of course, gambling was illegal in most parts of the country and dues had to be collected manually. But these days you can't go five minutes without hearing about placing a freaking bet. Yahoo is now a footnote in fantasy history as Google has slowly invaded our lives in a way that Yahoo didn't dare to. Yep. The Madden brand. When you really want to talk about things or people that wouldn't fly in today. Oh boy, Madden. Oh, we talking about John Madden? I thought we were talking about the video game. It's NFL. You have to look at a guy that wouldn't fly at all. I'm talking about the late John Madden, of course, the head coach turned broadcaster turned video game mogul. The Madden NFL video game series developed by the then not hated Electronic Arts played a significant role in establishing John Madden's brand in the 2000s. The series began in 1988, but gained widespread popularity in the 2000s due to its annual releases and consistent improvements in gameplay, yeah. graphics, and features. And of course, it's only gone downhill since. Madden's involvement in the video game series added to its credibility. He lent his name, voice, and football knowledge to the games, making them more authentic and appealing. At this point, bro, they need to take that man name off that shit. That shit is atrocious now. They destroying that man, uh, that man name with them garbage ass football games, bro. They need to just call it NFL. They need to just call it NFL. NFL 23, NFL 24, 25 going forward, bro. Take mad name up out of it, bro. Don't stop disrespecting that man name. That man is gone. That man is dead and gone. They need to take that man name off. I know the family probably still eating off that shit, but they disrespecting that man legacy with the bullshit ass games that they putting out every fucking year. Shit is garbage. Feeling to fans. His signature catchphrases, commentary, and affinity for Brett Favre and Turducken became synonymous with the gaming experience, creating a sense of familiarity and authenticity for players. And nowadays Madden is still Madden in names, but you don't hear his voice when you pick plays, and it might as well be called EA NFL at this point. Now, John Madden's broadcasting career was another cornerstone of his brand in the 2000s. His insightful and often humorous commentary along with his unique telestrator analysis made him a beloved figure among football fans. His broadcast- Facts. N NBC football has never felt the same since John Madden stopped. Do a play by play uh, analysis, bro. But uh, yeah, man. It ain't never felt the same, bro. It don't feel good watching the uh, Sunday night football game on NBC and not hear John Madden voice. Work in partnership with Pat Summerall, who was drunk most of the time, and Al Michaels made him a prominent fixture during NFL broadcasts. When he called his last game in February of 2009, it marked the end of an era. Madden's larger-than-life personality contributed to his ubiquity in the 2000s. He was also fodder for impressionists like Frank Caliendo, another guy that definitely peaked in the 2000s. Madden's brand extended beyond the video game and broadcasting realms. He was involved in various advertising campaigns, further solidifying his presence in popular culture. To this day, you can't say the words tough act and tenactin and not read it in John Madden's voice. These days, we just don't have a singular voice or brand as powerful and synonymous with the NFL as John Madden was. Do you really think EA Sports could sell a million copies of Collinsworth NFL? And finally, the last 2000s NFL that wouldn't fly today. Running backs scoring TDs. In the span of a mere four years, we saw the single season touchdown record broken three separate times by three separate running backs. In 2003, Priest Holmes found the end zone 27 times scoring every single one on the ground and helping the Chiefs to a 13 and 3 record. What's really crazy about that season? He was 30 fucking years old. Today running backs are sent to the glue factory the moment they turn 26. 
Two years later, league MVP and Madden cover athlete Sean Alexander won up Priest, hitting pay dirt 28 times with just one receiving, carrying the Seahawks all the way to Super Bowl 40, where he finally met his match when he ran into the Zebra Curtain in Detroit. Again, he was 28 years old when he broke the record, which is old even for a corn star. Alexander's record stood for less than a year in one of the greatest seasons by any player we've ever seen. Ladanian Tomlinson broke the, the goal, goal line, a record. The GOAT, bruh. Ladanian Tomlinson, bruh. That's what I'm talking about. That's why he's here, baby. That's why he's the GOAT. The GOAT. <laughs> Ladanian Tomlinson. Oh, man, I remember having that jersey. I remember having that jersey, boy. That LaDainian Thomason jersey? Oh, man. Shout out to my grandpa for buying me that damn jersey. He ain't had to, but... I knew it was fake, but... I ain't care. As long as the name was spelled right on the back. <laughs> That's all that matters. I knew it was fake, but... Because that shit ain't had no uh, Reebok or no Nike on the side. That shit was just... That shit just had... That shit just had NFL stitching, and then it had the Damian Thomason name on the back, and then it had the Chargers, but it didn't have no Reebok or no Nike. I knew it was fake. I knew it was fake because we was in the uh, we was in the thirst store. <laughs> 31 times, including I remember that jersey. those on the ground. I love Obviously that jersey. Was an easy choice for MVP. The Chargers had the best record in the NFL, and of course, it all came crashing down in the divisional round thanks to Marlon McCree's slippery butterfingers. Tom Brady's luck. Now, that's some bullshit that would still fly today. It's safe to assume that Tomlinson's record may never be broken unless we get a 24 game season in the future. I mean, Austin Eckler led the league last year in TDs, and he scored 18. 13 of them on the ground. Today, there's just not as many bell cow backs. They've been pushed aside in favor of committees and easy pick play TDs in the red zone. So rest easy, LT. Your record isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Facts. Unlike glow sticks. Well. Alrighty, so that's just gonna about do it for this one. I'll see y'all the next video, man. Till then, peace out.